for people who are unfamiliar with the, like who are kind of new to crypto and stuff, I mean, I'm familiar, but since you're an educator, would you mind explaining what the happening is? Yes, uh, absolutely. So um, Bitcoin operates by a number of um, uh, algorithms or uh, recipes, if you like, that uh, control its, its future evolution that was set in stone um, when Bitcoin was launched. One of those uh, algorithms um, is is based on the heartbeat of Bitcoin, which is the issuance of a new block every 10 minutes. And within that new block, as a reward for uh, securing the network, uh, miners receive a reward. Uh, and that reward is um, partly in the form of transaction fees and partly in the form of a block subsidy, as it's called, where new Bitcoin are issued. And, and these new Bitcoin are basically created from nothing. Um, but in order to earn them, you have to expend energy and provide security to the network. So they're not given for nothing. Uh, in fact, they're given for proof of work, which is the security mechanism in Bitcoin. Uh, so miners collect these rewards. Every 10 minutes, there is a block. And these rewards are designed to diminish every 210,000 blocks. Uh, so after the first 210,000 blocks in 2012, uh, about four years into uh, Bitcoin's life, um, and if you do the math, a uh, block on average every 10 minutes, uh, 210,000 blocks is four years. Right. Uh, but, but not exactly four years because blocks are not exactly every 10 minutes. They're on average 10 minutes. Sometimes they're faster, sometimes they're slower. That dynamically adjusts to keep that heartbeat uh, uh, on, a, on an average of 10 minutes on the long term. So approximately every four years. Uh, so in 2012, the reward went from 50 new Bitcoin per block to 25 new Bitcoin per block. In 2016, uh, it went from 25 to 12 and a half Bitcoin per block. And in May, uh, at some point in May, uh, at block, uh, so the time we're not entirely sure about because that changes as per block, but we are very sure about the block number. Right. Block 660,001 will have a six and a quarter Bitcoin block subsidy in it. That's baked into the rules. As the block, uh, th that new block is issued, everybody calculates uh, the same equation, and that equation is divide the total number of blocks that have been issued so far by 210,000, um, and, um, and then take that and divide the reward uh, in half that many times, and you arrive at an answer, and that answer is six and a quarter Bitcoin. Everybody makes the same calculation every block and decides what the subsidy for the next block should be. So at, at the same time, when block 660,001 comes out, everybody will have made that calculation, and they will reject a block that has more than six and a quarter uh, Bitcoin in its block subsidy. That mechanism of only accepting a block that has the correct subsidy and rejecting a block that doesn't is what forces miners to issue the block with the correct amount, otherwise they waste the energy by producing an invalid block. And that ensures that the issuance of Bitcoin is cut in half, hence the word halvening. If you follow that mathematical progression, you know, six and a quarter uh, now in 2020, uh, three and an eighth in 2024, uh, 1.7 something in uh, uh, 2028, and so on and so forth. It keeps diminishing in this geometric fashion until eventually uh, by the year 2140, um, or actually the year 2136, it goes down to one Satoshi, and then in 2141 or whatever, it goes down to zero. So. That is what keeps the total issuance at less than 21 million Bitcoin, where people say there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Actually, it's going to be 20,999,999 Bitcoin, 997 uh, and some change. And, and, and so it never reaches 21 million. It's just short of that when you add up all of these little blocks. I did not know that, man. I learned something new. And, and I really appreciate how you explained that. I mean, since you are an educator, I thought it made sense. And, you know, because some people, they're really confused by it. And that's why I wanted to ask you if you could explain it. Now, do you mind sharing your thoughts about what's, what's going on with the upcoming happening? And how do you think that 
Because I, I think that what's happened in the previous two happenings, we can't really take in consideration this time around, considering our economic climate. So yeah, how do you think all this is going to affect the happening? So, so the important thing to realize is that what this does is it changes one of the important factors that miners and others consider in terms of their profitability uh, and break-even point. Um, so I mentioned that Bitcoin has uh, a couple of very important dynamic algorithms. One is the issuance schedule, which we just discussed. The other one, which is really interesting, is, is what's called the difficulty adjustment or retargeting. So um, when miners are mining, uh, they face a certain amount of difficulty in finding a solution. And that difficulty is calibrated so that a block is found on average every 10 minutes. But in order to keep that calibrated to 10 minutes, the algorithm has to dynamically adjust up and down depending on how many people are trying to mine. Um, think about it uh, in terms of miners throwing dice. It's not exa an exact analogy, but it's close enough. Uh, think of it as miners throwing dice and looking for a specific combination, right? Only they're throwing a lot of dice, uh, a bucket of dice, and they have to get all sixes in a bucket of dice. And so depending on how many miners are trying to do this, uh, it gets easier or harder, and the uh, algorithm dynamically adjusts what the target score of the dice has to be uh, to make it easier or harder to find an answer. So for example, let's say um, you win by, um, by throwing anything over uh, a certain number, and a lot of different combination of dice throws can be above that number. And the higher you set that number, the harder it is because fewer and fewer combinations are actually winning combinations. So this retargeting algorithm operates in the background and it recalibrates the 10 minutes. And this happens every two weeks. Uh, so every 2016 blocks, which is approximately two weeks, um, everyone in the Bitcoin uh, system does a recalculation of how difficult it should be to find a block based on how many people are trying, based on how long it took to find blocks over the past two weeks. And then um, uh, in, a, in a proportionate way, adjust the difficulty. Everybody puts the same numbers into the same equation and therefore gets the same answer, which they then apply as the difficulty target to the, to the subsequent block after that uh, calculation. So this is a very interesting mechanism that I executes inside Bitcoin. What it does is it keeps the heartbeat steady at 10 minutes, but it also means that at any moment in time, if you think about the thousands of miners that are operating out there, and they have hundreds of thousands of these mining machines, and these mining machines come from various generations of hardware. Mm -hmm. Some are more efficient than others. And these miners then have various prices of electricity and various contracts they've signed up for, sometimes six months to a year of electricity bought in advance at a specific rate. They have different operating expenses. They have different costs for labor. They have different costs for the facilities that they're renting. They have all of these different um, costs, which means that for a given price of Bitcoin and a given um, ability and difficulty to find Bitcoin with mining, they have a price point at which they're profitable for the majority of their machines. Um, if they go below that price point and they're no longer profitable, what they'll do is they'll turn off the machines. But not everyone is running at the same level of efficiency. You have to think of this as a range. So some miners are way more efficient, some miners are way less efficient. They have more expensive electricity, more expensive labor costs, um, older equipment or some combination of these factors, whereas other miners have cheaper electricity, longer term contracts, better labor costs, and more efficient equipment. And that means that at any moment in time, some miners in the lower profitability levels will be unprofitable, and some miners in the higher profitability levels will be highly profitable. When the miners who are less profitable turn off their machines, what that does is it reduces the time, it reduces the uh, amount of hash rate available to the network, which means the blocks are found slightly less often. Let's say not 10 minutes, but 11 minutes on average. After two weeks of that happening on average, then the network will adjust and say, we don't have enough people mining, blocks are too slow, so the difficulty is gonna get easier, um, and that's gonna get us back to 10 minute blocks. Now think about, 
the miners who were more profitable and stayed with their machines on after the miners turned their machines off now become even more profitable because the difficulty went down because they're, they're now a bigger percentage of the network hash rate. So this dynamic adjustment happens, which means when you read articles that say that it is not profitable to mine Bitcoin below a certain price, that's not actually true uh, because the, the break-even price depends on the difficulty and the difficulty dynamically adjusts to, to represent the market. Miners knowing that this will happen in terms of having will happen uh, four years in advance means they can predict right now exactly how profitable they're going to be after that having versus how profitable they are now if they're generating half as many Bitcoin. Um, and some of them will decide they're not going to be profitable and they're going to turn off their machines um, depending on how, how long they have electricity contracts. And that may cause the hash rate to drop. Um, and if it drops, um, you know, think about it in this way. The worst case scenario is that it drops 50% because half the miners become uh, unprofitable and turn off their machines. And then the other um, half of the miners who remain become twice as profitable um, because now they have uh, double the market share. And um, since there's half as much money, but they're twice as profitable, they get back to where they were before. So that's the worst case scenario. It's actually not going to get that bad, in my opinion. Um, and, and the reason it's not gonna get that bad is, is simply because um, miners have seen this for a long time. It's unlikely they're gonna suddenly discover that half of them are unprofitable. Uh, even if it did, however, think about it this way, 50% um, of our, today's hash rate is the same as the hash rate we had in, at the beginning of 2018. Uh, a time when the network was very, very, very secure yeah. and was millions of times more secure than it was, you know, um, five, six years earlier. So um, the hash rate has been expanding so much that even if it's cut by half, the network continues to operate as if nothing happens. So that that's the technical sense. aspect. The technical aspect is really simple. Not much is going to happen. Um, because while it happens on a specific block, um, everybody knows and has known for years. So the time to take action and, and price this in and anticipate and prepare for it and adjust your business plan for miners ha has been the last four years, not the day before. Right. Um, and um, you know, I think we might see a, a drop in hash rate temporarily. The network is then going to continue. Uh, difficulty is going to adjust and we move forward. One thing to remember is that if nothing happens, then something very important happened. If nothing happens, then Bitcoin survived another halving. If nothing happens, then Bitcoin survived a halving in the middle of a massive recession. If nothing happens, then Bitcoin survived a halving when other financial systems needed a bailout. If nothing happens, then Bitcoin survived when other financial systems had to have stop loss uh, circuit breakers go off um, and Bitcoin didn't. That is a success. So for Bitcoin, the ultimate success is simply surviving. It's simply surviving without intervention, without a shutdown of the market, without the need for stimulus, without the need for a bailout, without any of that in a completely open free market where it's traded 24 hours a day with no limits, no circuit breakers, no ability to inject stimulus, no ability to print more of it. And if it survives under those circumstances, that is an enormous success. So if nothing happens, then something tremendous happens. And that is once more, Bitcoin is not dead. Uh, that is the ultimate survival story. That, is, that was so well said, man. 